usher was the usher for the wedding on the aeroplane. And the couple walked down the aisles of the aeroplane and they got married between the sort of canteen and the toilets. And he's there doing the wedding ceremony. And I've got it all on film. So if anyone's going, this guy's talking rubbish because Usher on the rally married a couple on the toilets of a 747. That really happened. It was absolutely nuts. How long were you with Ferrari? 14 years. 14 years. Yeah, 14 years, Ferrari. Took on an cool. ambassador role for a short period with yeah. McLaren. Yeah. Great product. Yeah, absolutely. Great driving car. Amazing and car. laterally Rolls Royce. I have photographs of the said car. I've also got the Ferrari Modus specification. It's not being offered to anybody else. So what I can do is send those uh, images, photographs, and the specification. The nice thing about this car is I sold it to a gentleman who I sold lots of prancing horses to. He bought it off me new. There were only three cars. You know, they, 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 those cars I know well, having supplied all three. Well, you found an F12 TDF somewhere? We we have unlocked a one-owned F12 TDF that uh, I, funnily enough, supplied from you. It's a very low mileage car, what we would call a Champions League car. With when we say low mileage? Around 1,200 miles. Awesome, yeah. Uh, full history. Good going. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant. All the right credentials. Rosso Corsa Nero has chosen at an atelier uh, in Maranello, Italy. This is when this job could get very expensive. That's a, that's a car that's very close to my heart, and that all of these people give me massive amounts of grief for selling mine. Yes. <laughs> um, you know the. And it's about basically the same spec as the one that I sold. Well, James. Yeah. We also have unlocked. An A12 competition. If you just wanted to go no, that, that, <laughs> that extra bit, that, that extra, extra bit farther. farther. That sounds extra expensive, Gary. So we can on access some such cars. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take great discipline to be working alongside you, Gary. Well, <laughs> I do. I do get a bit ca kid in a candy store. So Gary's in the middle of telling me a story of a client he once had. Yeah, he, he lived, lived in the Lanesborough. He hotel. lived in the Lanesborough. He yeah. sold them. Um, Many a car, five nine nine GTOs and such like. Um, but did you ever? He was sell he a was dog? he was hard in a car. No, he found a dog, sent the concierge to I think it was Nottingham to pay for it, pick it up, and take it by. So this is a guy that lived in the Lanesborough Hotel. Yep. He called down to the concierge at the yep. hotel and said, I've, "I've identified a husky. Can you go and pay for it?" And yeah, I'll, it for me? I'll give you in the money. In Nottingham. In Nottingham. Can you go and fetch it for me? Which is not next door to, to the which Lanesborough. to which they sent a car and uh, picked up a said dog had the right blue eyes and uh, back to the Lanesborough it came to live like a four-legged prince, prince for <laughs> for uh, a foreseeable length of time before the Lanesborough got sick of the said gentleman and uh, asked them to asked leave them to uh, exit stage right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the game. Been here a lot lately. Hey, the full team's in. The full team is in. <laughs> this is great. It's going to be a good day. So the idea of this is we're taking the Jesco to Gumball. Uh, Gumball HQ, that is. Not on, on Gumball. At least not yet, anyway. And uh, there's somewhat of a, of a full-blown photo shoot taking place in here. I think it was it. Really? Full, full house. Definitely, definitely time's full. Highly practical, I would say. Yeah, there's definitely room for a jacket by the triplex down there. <laughs> It'll work. What's super cool? So on Jesco, or so I should say specifically Jesco Attack, they now have triplex suspension in the very front, which is which is a first because traditionally on most Koenigseggs historically one of the sort of unique features is that you're able to take the roof off and store it in, in the front. But because there is this, this carbon chimney here, <laughs> this, this S duct, which contributes to cooling and downforce and triple X, the least practical, dare I say, of the Jesco's is the attack version in the Absolute, which incidentally is a much faster top speed car. 
It doesn't have uh, front trip lights, so it doesn't have the carbon chimney, so you can actually store your roof in the front of your absolute. But this is probably the tightest environment that we've ever started this car up in, and it's loud in any environment, so this is probably gonna disgruntle the neighbors somewhat. For the benefit of anyone who may not have been privy to the starting process of a, a Koenigsegg, carbon key here, and there's this magnetic recess in here. And unless that is recessed into here, which is one of the most satisfying feelings ever, um, it isn't starting. So, foot on brake, start up here. Normally at this point I would say it's worth going around the back of the exhaust, but you're not gonna need that in this situation. So just witness this rolling out of a showroom, off a sidewalk, into the main road, and then go, nah, I'm not gonna let you out. <laughs> just gonna leave you bricked in the, in the middle of a, of a crossroads. Seriously. We're out, we're gonna drop said nose lift. Oh, that's turned it off, there you go. Back down again. Is it not remarkable? It is to me, it blows my mind, that a car capable of developing 1,600 horsepower is able to drive around town at 15 miles an hour just like a conventional auto. It shouldn't be doing the things it's doing. I mean, the tolerances that this is designed to withstand, loads that it's designed to bear with all of the aero, and the top speeds that it's designed to achieve, and the lap times that it is designed to perform, I actually think the most impressive attribute is the fact that you've got all of that in a package that can do this. A few years ago, this was not possible to have this much power and this much ease. I would argue that this is the single least conducive environment to a Koenigsegg, and yet it gets on with it like it's a Golf. It's so cool. There you go, plenty of speed bumps here though. Gumball 3000. If you are a regular subscriber of the channel, you'll know that it is a rock and roll international car rally. This is its 25th year, and therefore in September, we are celebrating 25 years of Gumball. The way that Max has managed to curate it over the years, it's, um, it's managed to set the benchmark. The people that it has attracted over the years have been fascinating. 
and while it's cool seeing rock stars and skateboarders and hip hop artists and Fortune 500 CEOs all in one room, that's effectively what this thing brings. The important thing is, with the collaboration of those people in one room, Gumball have been able to raise millions of pounds over the years for various charities through the Gumball Foundation. That obviously attracted the uh, original attention of the Prince's Trust, and hence here we are this evening, officially anointing said partnership uh, with a splash of Koenigsegg. Anyway, here we are, about to go down Oxford Gardens. I lived down here for several years, and uh, the reason for that is because Gumball is at the very end. And my, uh, my wife, Lucinda, worked alongside her brother Max, running Gumball for a very, very long time, and it was very convenient for her to walk to work. So, so that's why I was ultimately based here. Never did I think, back in the day, where I could barely afford the rent in our postage stamp apartment, so I think I'd be driving down here in a Yesco uh, from our own Koenigsegg dealership up the road. So if there was ever a pinch yourself moment, this is one of those. Right, I'm gonna... In fact, I was about to say I'm gonna put up the nose lift, but here's proof of how slow we've been going since we started. The lift hasn't gone down on its own. So it normally goes down on its own when it hits 30 miles an hour. So since Kensington, the lift has been up the whole way. Slow life in the world's fastest car. Brilliant. Because the doors don't open like a conventional door, you can park a Koenigsegg with full door aperture in, the, in a tighter space than a conventional car because the door opening is that tight, right? Need I say more? <laughs> Have you got a crack team of sticker putter on us? Well, Gumball has a Gumball is the, has the crack team of putting stickers on cars. That's what they do. So uh, you don't want me putting stickers on anything. I'm telling you, it's not going to look good. Oh, right, that is so warm. It's like super warm. Wow, I'm going to do that in the future. It's so toasty. It's a good job I didn't have a chocolate bar in here, though. It would definitely be oozing out of my pockets by now. It might look like that. So that, that's the sort of proposed application of said transfer. So we've got the Princess Trust one here, the Gumball Foundation one here. You know what? We really must get some Koenigsegg London ones made. With the amount of uh, events that we've been asked to take this thing to. Uh, oh, yeah. Whose is it? Koenigsegg London's. We need a big sticker on the side of it, for sure. A major part of the day when we're filming for the main channel is what's the title and thumbnail. I currently have no idea what the title of this is going to be, but I know it's a fun day, so we're rolling on it. This is classic uncut. But I know this is a cool backdrop and we've got the Gumball logo up there. So we're going to, we're going to reposition and then get some shots and then to work out if it's a cool thumbnail. So. millimeters out of, of perfect symmetry and I know if we take that photo and I go to sleep tonight I'll wake up 3am and drive back here <laughs> to, to retake the photograph so we might as well get it right now guide me in so that the wing tips of the wing are equidistant between the posts that frame the door <laughs> good luck I will be trying very hard when I want to move him on in camera I'm gonna sound like <laughs> such a <t> <laughs> Maybe just one here. Because we can start that side, so we can just do one there. Yeah. Just do it this side yeah. over there. We get the whole, try and do the whole sticker as it were. Yeah, like that. It's <laughs> moving in though, isn't it? I've just noticed that every part of our logo is an individual piece. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm really glad that the first uh, graphics that we've had on the car is a Gumball sticker, mate. It's good yeah. news. It was great. So we, about. we started our Gumball Foundation you know, 10 years ago. It's actually the 10th year this year sort of, that we're celebrating of the foundation. Gumball's 25 years old, but the, the foundation 10 years old. Yeah. And in the last 10 years, we've basically raised many millions of pounds and supported some really great causes around the world, building skate parks for Tony Hawk and 
sports facilities, football pitches and whatever with Laureus and, and um, building cars in California with Project Reckless, giving uh, kids, uh, sort of mentoring kids into, into work. And we sort of realised that, you know what, we do all this amazing stuff around the world. We don't do any projects in London or the UK. Right. So, or not many projects in the UK. Yeah. So, so we wanted to look for projects, the, the charities that actually kind of go through with the building of facilities and all that sort of stuff. So, so you take the funds that you've raised to yeah. allocate them to uh, organized yeah. organizations like this yeah. and then go on and do X, Y, and Z. And like the, yeah. the example of Tony Boyd Fadditch. Yes. He builds skate parks. Sure. We don't build skate parks. Yeah. We help finance building the skate parks. Okay, so, that's, right, you know, that's how it yeah. sort of works. And with Princess Trust, so we were looking for We've realised that when we started the charity, we sort of got called in every direction to try and support anything that needs help. So, and you realise that's everything, it really. Yeah. And and to have a kind of more of a direction and something that fits with Gumball, we wanted to support sport, the arts, music, creative worlds. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's the world that our friends are in. That's the world that participants are in. And. We see ourselves more of a sort of pop culture brand than a, than a car brand, really. And um, so, so basically, Princess Trust, they actually kind of support, you know, all sorts of things. Music and, yeah. and, and kind of, you know, bring kids to the studio for the first time. Or we're getting them jobs in the entertainment industry. Yeah. So it's like a perfect one, really. The first hyper car, what would they have, really? The McLaren F1, with retrospective was, technology, was, was, yeah. is a hyper car, but yeah. it never got applied to that. Well, so was the FC220 in many ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Price it's, wise, the jump the, was so much, so much at that time. The terminology came off the back of the bay rack because yeah. it was so expensive, yeah. so extreme. And then the Zonda and then the yeah. canals yeah, from exactly. that sort of points. But it, they're looking at this, it's what you'd sort of say is a real yes. hypercar. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to give you a real, a real top line walk and talk here because actually I'll put a link in the description below because Mac gave me a full in depth walk and talk at this place and I've retained some of the info. Hey man. So um, it's all about the walls here. So, so this is the stories that we're going to work our way up now on the walls is representative of some of the significant moments, people and places that have taken place on Gumball over the years. So with the exception of the Queen here, pretty much everyone that we'll see on the walls uh, has at some point done Gumball. So we have Lewis Hamilton here, Travis Barker over here. That's an old photo. Richard from the Sanchez, Dizzy Rascal, pretty cool. The nature of the rally, it attracts a lot of top talent. And you get some amazing photographers, videographers, artists who do a lot of their work during the rally. And some of the photos that they end up coming back with is, is really cool. But once upon a time, um, Gumball took entrance to North Korea. That is not a spelling error. <laughs> North career and Max was gifted this here and he's got rolls and rolls of North Korean artwork um, and this is it what you can't see here is that these are actually posters that were made en masse and instead of them being printed they're all hand painted right so if you can tie all of this you can see under it pencil sketchings of it see that super cool and every one was hand painted and they made them by the thousands rather than printing them, it's pretty nuts. Sorry mate, we got Idris Elba here, that's cool. Texan hip hop artist Bumby there. And this is, this is, for me, this is the kind of photos that really embody what Gumball is about, but look at the crowds that it draws. I mean, you wouldn't get much of a different crowd if the Rolling Stones were playing. And it doesn't matter if we're starting the event or we're halfway through it, at the beginning of every day and at the end of every day, the crowds are like that. And the thing that gets me the most right in the fields is during the stage, you can be driving for hundreds and hundreds of miles and on every bridge, there's people waving banners out across countries all over the world. Significance of a random Weetabix box in a box. So if you look on the bottom here, there's a Top Trumps partnership with Weetabix and then in, within that Top Trumps partnership is a Gumball partnership. And Max told me that the significance of the brand deal that they did with them sold millions of packs of Top Trumps with millions of Gumball items in it and he reckons it ultimately ended up paying for the building that we're in now off that one brand deal. So that's why that box is in this box in this stairwell. It is not uncommon for people to get Gumball tattoos during the rally. My first Gumball was 2011 
Yeah. And there was a guy who, in the same year, had done the Dakar, and he had a Dakar tattoo on this arm, and then a few months later he did Gumball, and then he got a Gumball tattoo there. And he was like, that's me done, life complete. <laughs> it was very cool. One of the things um, that ends up being a charity item at the end of each Gumball is every entrant ends up signing the flag on registration day. So the first day of the rally isn't actually on the road. It's when everyone arrives and they all meet each other for the first time. They sign on, get their wristbands, they're officially inducted on the rally and everyone before they leave the registration suite signs the flag. And over the years you end up getting signatures of Lewis Hamilton and David Hasselhoff and Idris Elba and also everyone else has done the rally and then at the end of the rally that flag gets auctioned off and the proceeds go to the likes of the Prince's Trust. So this is an example of said flag. 23, look at this, our friends DDE were a sponsor of that rally and they collaborated and got their logos on all the cars and all of the merch and that was that was really cool. This was the Middle East Gumball. This one we ended up in Miami and quite a few of the Gumballers, including myself who doesn't know how to kick a football, uh, ended up playing a charity football match against really interesting groups of people in the uh, Miami football stadium, which was, I've never felt so far out of my depth. And um, this is the wall, of, the wall of BMX frames. So uh, when Max was growing up, he was, he was die hard into BMX. And a lot of the frames on, on these shelves are frames that he aspired to when he was growing up. Uh, and so he's managed to, uh, to collect Skyway them over the years. TA. That is an original Skyway TA, yeah. I had that bike. Did you? I had that bike, it's yeah. Cool. That, that was the holy grail of BMXs That's when it. I yeah, was, it was a kid. Yeah, yeah. so he, he went and, and found them all. That, that had a, sorry, that had white mag wheels, didn't it? Yeah. Did. <laughs> That's right, yeah. They used to yeah, arrive yeah. from the, they arrived from the States yes, and you had to man. build them. There isn't here a gold-plated bike there, up there, so that's an actual 24 karat gold-plated bike. Close on it, you can see I'm not actually joking, that is, look, the whole thing is gold. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? A lot of these skate decks here belong to people who have done the rally. Rob Durdeck, Tony Hawk, Bam Margera. Fuck you later, okay, look. Super cool. And that, look at this, so this being a birdhouse skateboard, this will be a Tony Hawk deck, and you'll see it's used. Tony's done the gun wall, I don't know, maybe seven or eight times, and often during the rally, he'll just stop at random, random parts of the world and just grind a rail, jump down some steps or whatever, and then at the end, if he doesn't feel like taking the board home, he'll just hand it over. There's no such thing as coming first on a gun wall, and like everyone who's done gun wall gets asked that quite a lot, how do you win it? There's no winning it in terms of coming first, but the closest thing to winning it is being awarded the Spirit of Gumball Award. That's the top award, right? And the Spirit of Gumball, you've got more chance of winning it by not turning up in the same car that you started in because you broke down and you're three days late. So it's all about the endurance of getting to the end regardless. And the spirit part is if someone breaks down and you help them out and it, and it, you know, it sets you back, that's what it's all about, right? So it's not a race, it's a rally. And the reason I'm saying that is the Gumball machine was awarded to the spirit of Gumball winners. And then in recent years, they partnered with Aspirate and they made this like sterling silver solid one. It's like stunning thing. But I remember when people used to get handed these and <laughs> you know, it was, it was awesome. Oh my God. Look at this. You're mad, isn't it? So this is Gumball Vodka, and this is in collaboration. Gumball Orange. With XA. When does this hit? When does this hit the shelves? End of April, start of May. End of May. Yeah. Start of May. Look at that. Every Gumball Tesco. Vodka. How gnarly is that? For a little while. How wild is that? So cool. Excuse me, running around. No, it's all I'm gonna it's grab all it. It's all good. Yeah. Hide it. Right. And be back. Do you guys ever get tired of being in here? So I look at this every time oh, I come in here, I'm like, it's so new. Especially the pool table in the middle. The pool table. <laughs> I don't know how you guys get any work done, honestly. I know. The guy upstairs has got food for you, which we'll see. We've got the dark. <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, this was a long time ago. That was one of the earliest Koenigseggs made, and it entered Gumball. And I remember the guy driving it was basically a child, like he was so young.
Honestly, he was on it. He was like early twenties. Well, it's re it's really sad, isn't it? Because he sadly passed. Yeah. You know, and he's such a great dude. But you know, you, oh, look at the people who've done it. Kerry Hart here. You know. Jody Kidd. Cuban brothers. I remember them well. Burt Reynolds. I mean, it's full fat, you know. Madmen waiting rooms five saw like a 1950s airport. That's so cool. It's got to be one of the dreams for for anyone to curate their ultimate their ultimate man cave, isn't it? I mean, it's brilliant. What I really like about it is it's not just you know it's not his private block away. It's for the team, and that that's really cool. That yeah. is cool. We've got aspirations for this Jimmy for our office, haven't we? Hey. Well, one a few day. touches like that. <laughs> And it's, um, it's cushion. Well, what it actually is, is have you ever seen in the back of a flatbed pickup, sometimes they are, this is like an optional extra or something that you can spray in afterwards. It's a similar sort of surface. And they came in and I believe they sprayed it on. Sprayed it, yeah. sprayed it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I mean, when it's clear, it's, it's awesome. But Max was telling me, I mean, you get a bit of chocolate on it. It's just like there for life. You know, it's got, that, <laughs> it's got this sort of cling, clinging effect, but I think it's quite in, in keeping because it looks like skateboard grip tape. That's weird. Hoff was a reoccurring dude. I don't, I've lost track. I, I, reckon, I reckon Hoff's done 10 gumballs, I would say. And again, touching on the whole charity thing, the whole uh, gumball foundation, every rally that the Hoff was on, he would get up. I mean, I've never seen anyone command a room like David Hasselhoff. He embodies a list superstar. He walks into a room and just commands the attention of it. I mean, he's got this amazing energy and the whole room is on fire. But he would get up and he'd stand on a table and he would auction off a signed Baywatch jacket. And he'd often turn up with a float, you know, these things here, these red floats. And he would sign them and he would, and, and they just sell, you know? And, and this, is, this is part of the whole auction thing where the, ultimately the funds come from for the, the foundation. We spotted that. Travis Pastrana jersey up there. Pastrana's done gumball a few times. Amazing. Have you got a favourite person you met on the gumball, Joe? Favourite person I met on the gumball was possibly Tony Hawk. Possibly Tony Hawk, I think. Usher was pretty cool. The gumball that I met, Usher, check this out. And I'll definitely link this because I know no one's going to believe what I'm about to say but I managed to get it on film. So 2018 Gumball Rally, London to Japan. The pickup point to put the cars on the airplane was Bologna Airport. And there were these, this, what I can only describe as a Bitcoin couple, right? Done incredibly well of the rise of Bitcoin. And this couple decided to get married during Gumball on the airplane, right? And Usher was the Usher for the wedding on the aeroplane. Here today to celebrate life, love, and the spirit of the rally. The couple walked down the aisles of the aeroplane and they got married between the sort of canteen and the toilets and he's there. And I've got it all on film. So if anyone's going, this guy's talking rubbish. Place the ring on Brock's finger and repeat after me. I, Crystal Rose, promise to live with health in body, peace in the spirit, and love in the heart. I, Crystal Rose, promise to live with health in the body, peace in the spirit, and love in the heart for you. In the name of the blockchain, with the mixes <laughs> of Gumball Air, Usher, our Usher, <laughs> husband and wife, and a mutable. Because Usher on the rally married a couple on the toilets of a 747. That really happened. It was absolutely nuts. That pair of Jordans is from the very first production batch of Jordans ever made. So if you're into sneaker culture, Fortunes. You know you could buy a Ferrari with those. Yeah. So on the drive here, Jimmy, I was, I was telling you about the time that we 
we met with the mayor of New York and ended up clo closing Times Square. That was eight months after that, that meeting at a very unsuspecting Starbucks in New York. And we agreed that we were gonna close Times Square. And I remember sitting around the table, Starbucks in hand, and we had that chat. And the words were literally right. You, you realize that it's only the NFL and Macy's that close Times Square, right? Moving on. And now you guys. It was wild. And then there it is, that un unfolded. But some of the photos we got off the chart. Dead Mouse, Dead Mouse on the rallies that he did. He would always donate his iconic mouse helmets, as it were, to the foundation. They would auction those off. Some of those went for wild cash. That carbon fiber one, I remember hitting six figures. That was Absolutely. the story behind the, this, I forget. And it was old and fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the world's fastest bikes of that era, 1911. 1911. Board track racer, but also raced on flats as well. And, yeah. uh, Am I right thinking the Anthony Hopkins film was that, yeah, that one of those? Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool, isn't it? But what sort of speed were they doing on this? Oh, just over 100, I think. I mean, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Crazy. No thanks.